there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band a devout man one that feared God with all his household which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God what all right skip all of the verses and go to verse 44 to 46 why Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God then answered Peter okay let's just finish it can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed they him to tarry certain days lifting the embargo lifting the embargo lifting the embargo lifting the embargo a life there are embargoes and limits and restraints that you will encounter as you journey it is not a prophecy of doom is a reality of life life is full of embargoes embargoes are in diversities there are three kinds four other sorry four kinds of embargoes there are embargoes you are born into you are born into such embargoes such restrictions such limitations by reason of your biological connection your father your mother you are born into that embargo into that restriction there are embargoes you put yourself in by reason of your lifestyle your attitude the things you do the embargoes you put yourself in by attitudes and there are embargo number three that people put you in there are embargoes that people put you in by reason of your relationship and your association with them they put you into these embargoes and there are embargoes that hell set after you when you have an uncommon destiny you were not born into it you didn't put yourself in it people didn't put you in it but by reason of our standing your destiny is hell is set out against you and they place such embargoes on you because you are just one out of the number embargoes abound the place where we read if you don't understand this explanation you won't understand what i'm about to share god almighty the jews we are god's major priority that was why he sent jesus to them but the jews never believed in christ because what they had in their mind's eye was a savior that would break through the cloud come through the sky with so much power dominion with all the angels around him to come and redeem them but this one came in a manger he was born through a virgin birth and he was kept where animals were so they felt it is despicable and insultive for their messiah to come to a manger they already had a premonition they had in their mind's eye an expectation of how the messiah should be born so they didn't believe in him and that's why anytime he's speaking they say is this not the capital song is this not jesus is this not jesus capital son they, they could not correct they could not relate there was no semblance between a manger and the messiah so when jesus died god's plan was first 
to save the Jews, the people who he came to save and who actually came to redeem immediately but never believed in him so his plan was to save them those who are from the jewish you know the jewish uh, uh, lineage after god is done with that he can now go to save the world which is called the gentiles that was the plan of god now peter for came from that inclination peter came from that generation of the jews but the nation of italy was classified to be among the gentiles the, the nation of rome was classified to be among the jews till now the jew are still expecting the messiah you must know that that is why paul said in romans 10 verse 1 he said his desire is that all jews will be saved because till now they're still waiting for the sky to break open you know the sky to just come christ to come through the sky so the jewish nation of israel of rome they, they are the nations that actually ex expected it but this time around god's agenda was to save them and go and save the gentiles but there was a man called cornelius by reason of his attitude and his lifestyle and his character he changed the program of heaven he lifted the embargo that god placed on the jews now, now god was not done with the gentile but by reason of a man's attitude the man lifted the embargo of salvation that god placed on the gentile and god had no choice but to go beyond the scheme of work to go beyond the divine curriculum and he went and moved straight and redeemed the gentile and i tell myself when i read this many years ago that if a man a matter man could lift up a divine embargo what about a satanic embargo an embargo that god put himself a man could live a life that could could lift up the embargo that means any embargo placed on hell is it by hell is it consequential am i talking to somebody here if a man could live a life and some attitudes and character that could alter a plan that heaven had it means any plan hell has is inconsequential it's just like a man called Nebuchadnezzar under the judgment of God for seven years he went to the wilderness and his seat was vacant his seat nobody could sit on his seat because God Almighty was the one trying to judge him am I talking to somebody here there is somebody under the sound of my voice no matter the embargo placed around your life I see the embargo lifted take your seat an embargo was placed Esther Esther had an embargo place but in Esther 4 16 she said go and fast and pray for me I'll go to the king though it's against the law if I perish an embargo was placed in the life of the three blue boys the Bible says in Daniel chapter 3 verse 24 profound and clear the three blue boys were faced with a confrontation in Daniel 3 24 Nebuchadnezzar was confused he asked himself a question did we not cast in three men and in verse 25 of Daniel chapter 3 he said but I see four men loose an embargo was placed over Daniel that anyone that prays will be cast into the den of lion and Daniel was cast into that den but in Daniel chapter 6 verse 22 Daniel said God has sent his angel and his angel has shot the mouth of the lion I like what he says in Daniel 3 27 concerning the three blue boys he they described them as young men on whom the fire had no power on whom fire had no power neither was the hair of their head saying why it takes men to lift embargo god won't come and lift embargo for you it takes men man is the duty of man to lift up embargoes just follow me closely the duty of man ezekiel 22 verse 30 god says i sought for a man and i like what he says in psalm 17 14 he said men which are thy hands men are the hands of god jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1 he said go through the city seek for a man look for a man that seeketh justice jesus met that man who was by the pool of bethesda he said how long have you been here and in john chapter 5 verse 7 the young man said i have no man meaning i've been here because i lack men i have spent long time here because i lack the right man not that listen not that there were no men there were men but there was no man 
you can there can be men around you and no one takes your emancipation as his passion no one takes your freedom as his assignment and the bible says a man called cornelius please listen to this i'm going to offend you and it's deliberate if i have to offend you to affect you a man called cornelius a centurion a man of class but he feared god we are in the generation of being churchy and classy the generation where churchianity is connected to classlessness is over where we live class pomp pageantry celebration lifting we leave it for the world a generation where we feel that 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 righteousness is wretchedness a generation when you see a brother in school that has a car over you must link him to a fellowship a generation when you see somebody stranded and is putting on a suit the first thing that comes to your mind is that he's a pastor he was a man of the entire band the bible says in genesis 13 verse 2 and abraham was very rich he was a man following god but there was a blessing of god upon his life in proverbs 10 22 the blessing of the lord make it rich it doesn't make people stranded it doesn't make people incapacitated it doesn't put people on the ground it blesses people it lifts up people in psalm 112 verse 3 concerning the man of fear god God. he said riches and honor are in his house in genesis 26 13 the man was great he went forward and he grew until he became very great in second chronicles 9 and verse 22 consigning the king solomon he says solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom we are in the generation of being churchy and classy there are people there is a popular um i don't know what genre of music it plays now it got saved i don't know what music it plays it got saved it's an american and by reason of his he rap, he's a rapper you know what i'm talking about and by reason of his salvation it was people like him that were attending the service he began to preach he began to hold concert and people like we began to attend his service we are in a generation where christianity needs to be properly defined you enter into some churches you enter into a place you see defeated frustrated poor sick downcast set of people where everybody is down i mean the church is supposed to be a place if you study the corinthian church it was a place of elites the corinthian church if one of the problems they have was that they knew too much lawyers will argue bankers will argue that's so we argue they'll bring the matter to paul he got to a point that when paul gives an answer he doesn't give a final answer he said i leave you to your conscience because he knows even with the answer he has brought they will question him paul will answer it and say well judge among yourself because and that church if the church of Corinthian was a church that the bible said they came last in no gift all the gifts of the spirit were operating all the gift of the spirit we are at work and yet men of dignity and honor we are in church am i saying something here we are in that generation once you are a child of god your mentality should be geared towards excellence your mindset should be geared towards being classy there are people coming to church they wear nonsense going out for an event they dress to kill they wear nonsense to church now not that they, not that now there's a difference between not having and having not making god priority 
when I have seen some people out there when they appear in events you see them so dressed when they are coming to church it's very horrible because they have a mentality they have a mentality that this you know the way some people see this God they don't see him on the throne they don't, they don't see him on the throne they don't see him move in in the midst of cherubims of gold they have a mentality when they think of God they see one old man in their village that doesn't like trouble one old man in their village that is so gentle but he's, he's a farmer he's a farmer but he doesn't like trouble he's so he's so he's so you know because they have that mentality that oh that is why anybody that is doing well is under attack like I said to them in a pastor's conference recently I said must we all be poor if you have a covenant with poverty not everybody does there, there is a, there's a generation of when you are you are blessed do you know how excited it is when a governor begins to blast in tongues do you know how excited it is how excited it is when a senator begins to pray in the holy ghost begins to address address issues with scriptures we have left it for them. Politics, dirty game. Yeah, this one, dirty game. Business, dirty game. This one, dirty game. It's not the game that is dirty. It is the players that are dirty. So it needs clean people to enter there. Prosperity doesn't make people proud. Prosperity doesn't make people look warm. I'm an example. It doesn't. That's a pathological, arrant, chronic lie. It's not true i pray more than, more than many of you i study more than many of you it doesn't take anything are you following what i'm saying that's a pathological lie when somebody tells you oh, it, it is you that matters a man that is carnal in prosperity will be carnal in poverty it is a decision you make it's a personal decision you make a decision to operate and live in discipline you make a decision i can tell you it is more honorable your prosperity glorifies god than your poverty you shall eat in plenty and you shall glorify the lord and you shall praise the lord your plenty affects your praises Don't tell me that i'm laying the foundation he was a of the centurion band jesus said occupy till i come i get irritated when i see this generation feeling that once you are born again you must be at the mercy of other people your mentality must change must change anything you do the best those in the world want to release albums and songs they put in the best you see the cinematography you see the director outstanding the light is outstanding in the church they stand behind the microphone hallelujah praise the lord they have this 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 poor mentality and they expect that song to they, after singing nonsense they start fasting on it father i want to blow lord i must blow i must blow i must blow on nonsense you will blow no god will not let you blow because god does not identify with nonsense I'm trying to change your mentality. Why is it that when they want to sell a car that is useless, worthless, it is your house they come to? Because they know you are the one that will buy and you start using prayer to control the car. You are coming to church, you stop here to church, you pray, 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 pray. You move again, you pray, pray. What is, oh, what, what is that? What is that? You bought nonsense, you are now using prayer to control it. Anything anything you want to buy you never think of the best you want to buy a phone eh there's any phone that came out eh how much they sell nigeria used must you always have this mentality of a failure eh, that shoe is fine though how much is fairly used what is your problem is there a cost on you that you will not go for the best is it is somehow and the truth is this some of you have the money you prefer to buy five that have been used by people witches have worn it and spread perfume on it demons have worn it marine spirit than to go for one that is good yeah. 
when they drew the design of our office i looked at it i said i don't like it put this put this put this put this yeah so, he said nothing i said the best the best let people walk in and respect jesus let people walk in and know that the church is not their mate am i talking to somebody here is not their mates he was of the band he was a centurion and he was a devout man he feared god riches and words can only carry you away when your heart rests on them but they are good for the propagation of the gospel if god gives you a vision to go to america to preach the gospel you are not a witch you will not go on a banana leaf you buy a ticket and God gives you the gospel to go to Germany and Japan to preach that God to do programs in all of those places you need money so I need to establish that so that your mentality this this negativity this negativity around you begin to think of the blessing don't plan towards buying second hand plan towards buying the best don't plan towards it plan towards buying the best brand new We we're about to buy something one time for the church and somebody said ah, daddy it's expensive was how much they told me and i asked not the people they buy them those that you i was telling mama i said i'm going to see paul at the end of service any call instrument from violin to whatever any go and look for them any call instrument any kind of issue that they that they play anywhere in the world i said tell just give us the list we supply them let them let there be a complete a complete band that sometimes we just sit there in church and we are playing karaoke. We are just having a good time with God. <laughs> a jazz band is turned in some church. They will say, oh, what is all this? They will say, Lotepi is here. The stick is broken. They will look for another stick. There's an original and there's a normal stick. They are playing and all of that. He says, and this God. Ow! Excellent is thy name. The God of excellence. He know the it. The Archbishop of the house bought a car. In those days, it was the days of Roadmaster. You know Roadmaster? Roadmaster. My father had one. ROX1935D. I remember the number. ROX1935D. Those Roadmaster, very big. People had, and the Archbishop of the house was the first pastor then to buy a car. One day when he bought the car, elders gathered and began to pray for him that he has backslidden. Now you have bought car, you have bought car, you have backslidden. You are a sinner. And one time, while he was driving, it was raining. All the elders were in the rain. And as he was driving, they were stopping the pastor, pastor, stop and carry us. He said, no problem, enter the car and backslide with me. <laughs> Since you say I have backslidden for excellence. The blessings of God makes wealthy. God is not against you having money. God is against money having you. I want to balance that. So remove all this, all this poverty mentality from your spirit. Remove poverty mentality from your spirit. On this express, when you go in, there used to be a place where occult people gather. It's a hall for giving to a particular confraternity. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. They're going down, down, down. It was in their building. They rented it. They were paying, you know, every year. So I found out and I asked them, I said, did they own this? They said, no, they rented it. I said, how much did they pay? They told me, I paid for 10 years. I'm not using it to, I just paid for 10 years. I locked them outside. I'm not using it to, I'm not using the hall. I'm not doing anything with the hall. I'm not doing anything with the hall. I'm not, I don't even, I've forgotten. When they told me the amount very cheap i said that's what they pay yes i'll pay you double they said, i will give you now you want to put church i said me put church we had caught today before am i mad just tell me <laughs> just tell me how much you told me. i said i'll double it i'll pay for 10 years 10 years i said bring contract i signed see you and you're looking for trouble what's not my business i just signed and i said you shouldn't come there again that was how that court closed that court closed 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 because I have the agreement. You talk, I take you to court. If you open hall for them, I take you to court. Because you already signed an agreement. That is what money should do. From that day, when I'm passing, I just look at 
Gideon and smile. Guess what they did? The people removed their sandbox. Pew! Or put their sandbox from that place. And they don't know that I'm the cause. <laughs> God spell. God wants to empower you to silence wickedness. There's a level of blessing you have. You walk to your landlord, you buy his house and make him a tenant. Am I communicating here? I decree by the blessing of God coming your way. That blessing that the Lord is giving to you, it shall bring beauty to the gospel. It shall bring beauty to the gospel. It shall bring beauty to the gospel. If your amen is louder, take the blessing. Is your, is your mentality changing? Listen, you may have no money in your pocket now. Have a plan in your spirit. So forget about your present. I'm not talking of your present level. No, just have the mentality. Start thinking it. Start thinking it. Start dreaming it. The Bible says in Psalm 92 from verse 12, Psalm 92 from verse 12, the Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. And verse 13 says, they that are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall bring forth fruit in old age, verse 14. And they shall be fat. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Let me settle that before we go further. Cornelius was a man of prayer and a man that gives arms. Let me talk on that one again. One of the problems with prayerful people is that they are very stingy. I'm handling the matter one by one. Ga, 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 ga. But when it's time to give your pocket, you hold yourself, hold your pocket like, 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 like glue. You are so stingy, so scrungy. If you can give God your time in prayer, why can't you give him your money? We have a generation and that is why it appears because this must go together. We have so many people who, have, who are prayerful. They can do video. They can speak in tongues but they don't pay tight. They don't give offering. Am I talking to somebody here? A very responsible generation that a lady can spend 50,000 to buy hair and spend another 5,000 whatever to fix the hair and hold 100 naira as offering. On the day of trouble, call on your hair. It's your priority that determines your prosperity. That's why you are not married. That's why you can't have a child. That's why your marriage is in crisis. I'm not saying this because I want your money. I'm giving you a reality of life. Let your, let your sacrifice be as loud as your prayer. Let your sacrifice be as loud as your prayer. You fast, you pray, you don't give. This church, I've said it over and over. This church is blessed. So when I talk on giving and prospect, don't even think, don't think, don't let it. If it comes to your mind that this pastor is looking for your money, rebuke that thought. It's your village people speaking to you. Rebuke that thought. Because it cannot, it cannot be. Our leadership, no, we don't plan, we don't plan this program on, on this, run this church on offering. You, you know the kind of projects we do? Am I communicating here? No. No. <laughs> let me not scare you. <laughs> so let's, let me not scare you. Let me not scare you. Many are prayerful, but very stingy. Three things must go together. Prayer, sacrifice, purity. Many are prayerful. They are stingy. Some are prayerful and they are givers, but they are sinful. <laughs> uh, give you food. And you will understand it that you must, as you pray, as you sow, 
you must live pure in psalm 66 18 if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me in isaiah 59 verse 1 the hand of the lord is not shutting that it cannot save his ear is not heavy that it cannot hear he said but your sin and your iniquity have separated you from god and your sin has turned the face from he cannot say Isaiah 59 1 and 2 so many are praying yet living in sin many are praying yet living in unrighteousness and God is saying that that's the reason why it appears your prayer is not penetrating that's the reason why it appears that your prayer is not progressing Proverbs 15 verse 8 says the of the prayer of the upright is a delight to God don't forget the popular verse of scripture second chronicles 7 14 if my people who are called by my name shall what and what and turn from their wicked ways he said i will hear from heaven i will first forgive their sins and i will heal so how do you explain somebody just left fire night after praying for hours after praying for hours in fire night and went straight to her boyfriend's house collected so much fuel and fire and went to a place to quench it you are not ready for any sacrifice so i preached a message and i said to people those who are living with people and and they are not mad they are not you know they are cohabiting they should leave and i saw so much messages somebody said i'm a student i'm living with my boyfriend please they, you said we should come and see you for help this one said and this i'm living with this for help and i was a little bit worried it's only people who are ready to marry that should even talk about that not students you say you are you are because you have no accommodation that is why you are squatting with a man yet you are using a phone what thousands of naira you are squatting because you want to squat you are dead you are there because you want to stay there because even if i get you an apartment does that stop you from going to visit him if i get you an apartment does that stop you from going to spend the night there you think i'm not a good businessman you think i'm stupid an apartment that apartment is going to be a branch an extension of the slaughter slab it's going to be an extension you think i'm stupid me you want me to do that bring your parents bring your father bring your mother we pay your diary we do everything you marry him and i just wonder i said these people don't know say their pastor gets sense for say the man good anything just tell me go just give you me no 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 i'm naturally intelligent the holy ghost can't join him again Abba. <laughs> am i communicating here let me just run through this because there is there is so much god expects of you i was listen I was studying the bible on the fig tree do you know the bible says in mark 11 14 when jesus saw the fig tree jesus said something no man eat of you from this day hence no man because christ expected the tree to bring fruit to it because the tree never brought fruit to it christ cost it what does that tell you if you are fruitless to god you'll be useless to man no man each of you if you are fruitless to god you will be useless to man if you can't make impact and affect heaven you cannot affect man this man changed it he lifted the embargo an embargo that divinity placed he lifted the embargo an embargo placed by the programs and the curriculums of heaven i am assured this morning everyone under the sound of my voice whether you're watching me on television or hearing me on the radio or watching me live or seated in this auditorium every embargo in your life it shall be lifted by fire it shall be lifted by force it shall be lifted by fire it shall be lifted by force it shall be lifted by fire it shall be lifted by force it shall be lifted by fire it shall be lifted by force somebody shot fire yeah, 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 yeah. Oh!
Come, take your seat. While he was preaching the word, the Holy Ghost fell. You cannot separate the Holy Ghost from the word. If you want to enjoy the Holy Ghost, then you must go for the word. The Holy Ghost fell. Isaiah 61 from verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. You can't separate the Holy Ghost from the word. We are in the generation of the Holy Ghost. We are in the era of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in John 6, 63, he says it's the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 3, 6, Jesus said to Nicodemus, that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Second Kings 2, verse 9, the Bible says Elisha said to Elijah, I need a double portion of thy spirit. Spirit. We are in the generation of the Spirit of God. In Micah chapter 3 and verse 8, the prophet Micah said, He said, As for me, I'm full of power and of the Spirit of the Lord to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. I'm talking of the error of the Holy Ghost in Luke 24 49. He said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye shall be endured with power. We are in the era of the Holy Ghost. There were three births that were predicted before they were born. Three people they were predicted before they were born in the Bible. The first is Isaac. Before Isaac was born, it was predicted. The second is Samson. Before Samson was born, it was predicted. The third is Jesus. The Bible says that Ma Elizabeth was expecting, Mary was expecting, when the Lord visited them. He said, when both of them saw themselves, they have the baby in their womb move. He said, and the baby was full of the Holy Ghost. Anywhere the Holy Ghost is, there is movement. When they saw themselves, the baby moved. Anywhere the Spirit of God is, there is movement. You can't have the Holy Ghost and be stagnant. He said, as Peter preached the word, as he spoke the word, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word I look at the life of a man called Cornelius and there were certain attributes I found that God saw in him and the embargo was shared. number one the Bible says when he saw Peter he fell at Peter's feet he fell if you must lift up the embargo be humble be humble Verse 25, Acts 10, 25, he says, he fell down. Your honor for the anointing is a proof of your humility. Your honor for the anointing. Your value. Your value. And value is expressed. Honor, rather, is expressed via value. For the anointing. He humbled himself. He fell down at his feet. A wealthy man. We can, do you know we can break we can break this scripture? We can talk on it for even one week. A wealthy man fell down at the feet of a servant of God. You can't say you are humble when you are empty. No poor man, in my definition and estimation, is humble. No poor man is humble. Stop telling me you are humble. Now wait. Let God lift you. We will know. Have money. Have fleets of cars. Have millions in your account. Have buildings all around. And still roll on the ground. Still see brethren and greet them. Still see the anointed and honor them. Then we can say you are humble. You must, you can only be called humble if there is something to make you proud and yet you refuse to give it to it. I don't believe anybody that is empty is humble. That's the truth. There are people, oh God, give them his one car. Their arrogance comes in. There are men that enter their car in the evening going nowhere. Nowhere. Just burning their fear, driving around. Nowhere. What are you looking for? Satan has given you a ministry. Job 1 7, Job 2 2, he goes to and fro. You just wind your car, put on the AC, play music, and you are driving just like that. Can you imagine in those days when we were growing up, even people that had bike, brand new bike, they do it. They hold the bike and they sit on the last seat. You remember that generation? 
they shift their bomb to the last seat and they are driving very very and they put on their keto sandals you know keto <laughs> keto put on put on their keto sandals wear their garwood jeans and their atlas bed if you are if you know the generation of the <laughs> eh? you know atlas bed that was the bed that was the designer invoked then they put on their atlas bed and they sit down there and they are driving so slow or they are riding rather so slow and nowhere no no assignment no destination nowhere just see, i just feel like strolling around on the platform of lack of agenda humility so calm down don't tell us you are humble let god bless you we will know let doors open for you you will know let lifting come let god give you connection you are not even lifted yet and you come your friend is doing a birthday you walk in there they are playing worldly music you you, you you know if i now if i now talk now they will feel my own is too much if i now if i now talk they will feel my own <laughs> to a worldly song if i now talk they will now feel that let me just me i know the god i serve in my mind i know the god. in my heart i know god is still my god if i even have you know the steps more than them they bring they bring red wine say ah, now wow if i don't drink this thing now they will say ah, ah, let me just well, let me just pretend as if you put it you drop it see if i just if i just well me i know myself <laughs> you take second you take third you take fourth the, the glass is empty and the, the demonic friend you have say, you glass? Oh, brrr, he turn another one you take the next thing you start seeing double <laughs> and you are taking this inspiration you are drunk you are drunk you are already tipsy you are drunk you are drunk you are already tipsy. <laughs> and you do that and these same people when you put on a gospel song they don't hide it remove this thing they don't compromise you put on a, a, a gospel song this is what kind of song is this but they put on their worldly song you don't react so that they don't they don't call you something you easily compromise there are people there are people that it thick people there are there are there is a way you carry god there are things people can't discuss around you i have seen people in i mean class great men who were busy showing things on their phone as i was coming they change they, 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 they come they come they come they change it pastor praise the lord pastor praise the lord i mean these are i don't know i mean certain level of people praise the lord pastor praise the lord pray master Jesus. from the way they have been calling the lord is not lord it's law praise the lord you know it's long they went to church praise master jesus our pastor bless us bless us bless us bless us not me compromising to them they have to compromise to me you are any weather you are invited for an event you ask them will there be alcohol say yes i'm not coming don't hide your stand say i'm not coming say who's coming say this this say, no 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 i can't be there say what say no no i can't be there it's not for a place like us no you you do you care do you care all weather coke you drink juice you drink beer you drink and you drink everything was a wicked king he was a terrible king that god wanted to judge but in first kings 21 i think verse 29 because he have humbled himself god carried the judgment away from his time and took it to the time of his son in first kings 21 29 he said because he have has humbled himself this thing i propose to do will not happen in his you see what humility can do it even reversed a prophecy That's what humility can do. Even as you pray, the, the place we quoted, if they shall humble themselves and what? So prayer is useless when humility is not the platform. Prayer is worthless except on the platform 
of humility. Am I communicating here? This man knew that there was something Peter carried that he didn't have. If you are not rich in Christ, you are poor. If you don't have wealth in Christ, no matter what you are physically, you are poor. If you don't have prosperity in Christ, you don't have the, the knowledge of the word of God, no matter what you are physically, you are poor. Jeremiah 17, 11, at Patrice, seated on egg and archet it not. So is he that gets riches but not by right. He shall leave them in the midst of his years, and at the end he shall be a fool. Proverbs 20, 21, say, an inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning. The end shall not be blessed. In Psalm 62, verse 10, when riches increase, set not your heart on them. Jeremiah 9, 23, say, let not the mighty man groan in his might, not the wise man glory in his wisdom, not the rich man glory in his riches. If any man glory, let him glory in the fact that he knows and fears me. No matter what you think you have, there are certain truths that must hit your spirit. No matter there are things you let me let me tell you three things you must have in mind that helps you to stay continually humble. Number one, no matter whatever you are, you are not the first whatever you are you are not the first are you beautiful as a girl there are people prettier than you in fact the bible see the bible my head is full of bible a literal work said i read a literal work in literature years ago the beautiful ones are not yet born am i communicating whatever you think you have now the best is not yet out in this town my father was the first person that bought a car that had no that had open roof many years ago he would press him a button the car will open people will gather and they'll be looking at it the roof was open the roof was open so one day i was with my dad he didn't know because it uses the thing was connected to, to electrically he didn't know that the, the, the button got spoiled we are driving it was drizzling rain was drizzling my dad press the roof wouldn't come on press through we were soaked inside rain <laughs> we were soaked i saw him angry when he just got to he just parked the car that was the last day he drove that car what was supposed to be for pleasure became punishment all those who had normal roof they were shielded from rain we that had popular car we were dying soaked in rain we were shaking and the rain held us at a distance he was pressing i saw him in the car was he was pressing 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 he got to a point he was here <laughs> what are you proud for? what are you proud about are you the first who are you what are you proud about you are intimidating somebody else and there are people better than you that have not intimidated you are you the first what do you have first corinthians 4 7 said what make you differ from another person what do you have that you did not receive for what will make it to differ from another what has thou that the thou did not receive if thou did receive why does thou glory as if you have not received it are you pretty it's not cream it's god that made you so all this your arrogance you say, i take care of myself i take care of myself i take up there are people who take care of themselves better than you all the enemy you have to do is just one little thing bam one useless rat just run around your face put a scar there it start expanding it start expanding it start expanding it start an infection come a virus comes disfigure you there are people that just normal pimple on their face disfigure them now you are not so arrogant you are not the first And let God know that despite what you are, you still honor Him. Why are you proud? Why are you proud? What, are you pr what have you seen? To the glory of God, as I go around the world, I laugh at the black race, I laugh at the Nigerian, the African. We are too proud. We are too proud. We are 
easily satisfied. I was ministering somewhere and somebody came and picked a piece of paper and um, I wrote something so he gave it back to me. The pastor sent him again. Talking to them, making an announcement. And the end, he was following the pastor. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And I was asking, who is this guy? He said, they said he owns the biggest commercial bank in that country. The biggest commercial bank, bank. Not bank account, bank. And yet that's how. One the pastor W.F. Kumu, he was preaching, great man of God. He was preaching. And somebody came and gave him an announcement. I went back and stood as a protocol. And he asked them, do you know that man is a general in the army? And he's a protocol. He tell you sit, you don't sit. You die now. <laughs> general says sit. You say you won't sit. His boys will just mark you. Generals don't go to war. They strategize. They plan and send their boys. They don't go to war. He says sit. He says, oh, for what? He just gives his boys eye contact. They wait for you outside. <laughs> and no soldiers don't argue. They give orders. They say, come. You open boot. Enter. <laughs> it's police that will be asking you what happened. Soldiers don't. They say, come. They open the boot. Enter. You talk too much. In fact, when you see them, I like what people do when they see soldiers. They don't even allow them to talk. They just start doing frog jump on their own. <laughs> I've seen people, when they just see soldiers, they don't even talk. So they say, come here. Ah, you be soldier. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Have you seen that before? On their own. They say, Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> but I'm saying this people, when I see people like that, I say, no wonder. God lifted them. You now. God blesses you. You come to a protocol meeting. No, now you are bigger than that. So no, if you people do not assign me to papa directly you know my level i should be following papa <laughs> i will not stand in front of church for what for what now no the level i'm operating like this is papa level me and papa in fact papa himself should be my protocol self now papa go be my protocol <laughs> you are too proud John the Baptist was full of the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And yet in John chapter 3 verse 30, he said he must increase. I must call my last shatter. You are dust. 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 That thing you think you are. That thing you think you are. I told my senior pastor, I said, I said, the day it crosses your mind that there's something you are doing for the ministry nobody can do, you're on your way out. The next person coming will shock you. We had, we had a church somewhere where the pastor was about to leave. He said, he said, who can? Nobody can take my place. When the next person stepped in, they ridiculed him. There are 7,000 that have not bowed their knees to bow. Why are you proud? You are not the first. And you will not be the last. You are not the first. You are good with soprano, auto, tenor, bass, or bass. You are not the first. You are good with the keyboard, you are good with the violin, you are good with the guitar, you are good with, the, with anything. You are not the first. So don't allow the devil make you ever think you are indispensable. That without me they can't you it's only without jesus we can do nothing without you we can do many things when he crosses your heart every day i tell god say lord is a privilege it's not i don't know what do i know sometimes when i walk into places and and the program in Benin, and I saw great men of God, all of them talking. Apostle is here, Apostle. These are people I grew up watching on television. The Apostle is here. I was looking at the, whether there's another Apostle they are talking about. Look, I don't see myself like that. I was about to minister, and Dr. Mobudu was there. I was asking, I said, Sir, don't you have anywhere going? He said, What? I said, yes, Sir, it's like you are busy. <laughs> he said, My friend, go and preach. I said, and You will sit down here. What will I say? 
So I told the people, I said, anything I say that's not correct, just don't judge me with it. Just judge me with what is behind me. All these people behind me. Not that I don't know what to say. Just know I made mistake because of the kind of people sitting behind me. Am I talking to somebody? There was one of them. I attended one of his service one time and I was walked out that I was not properly dressed. I was walked out. Not be seen, not properly dressed. And not get. And I saw the person saying, he's a great man. He's a great. I now remembered when they walked me out of his church. And I just said, God. My eyes. I kept holding my wife's hand. She didn't know. I was between crying and holding myself. I said, Father, who am I? I don't. I said, what do I know? What, what, what do I know? What anointing do I have? It is the grace of God. Please begin to understand it. That's your... Oh my God. How do I explain this to you? A lady came from Joss and I was leaving out, going... <laughs> I was going out and... She just screamed. You are going again. You have done it again. You, you are protocols were there you have done it again you this is some years ago you have done it again you you are going again you are wicked ah i've done it again i'm going again what did i do so i said stop i came down so you are going again you have done it again ah, sit down and i said what happened he said four sundays ago i came all the way from just i got here right in front of me you drove off Three Sundays ago, hey, 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 I came, you drove off. Last Sunday, so today again, you have done it again. You are going again. You are going again. I said, please, ma, sorry. Protocols were ready to eat her up. So I held her. I said, don't touch her. Who am I that somebody would travel four times from Joss to see me? I said, who am I? Mama, let's go to the office. Talk to you, are tired. Just be talking. The woman talked, talked, talked. She talked to the extent she was thinking of what to say. After she talked, talked, said, um, um, <laughs> my pick, um, 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 I just gave her that satisfaction. I said, Have you said everything, ma? He said, Yes, yes, yes. Have you said all? Is there any other prayer point? It's a privilege. <laughs> you are not the first. You are the only one that has a car in the compound. Nobody's resting. In the night, you will warm it. Afternoon, you will warm it. Daytime, you will warm it. Disturbing everybody. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Everybody's complaining. Are you going out there? Because you don't have car, that's why you don't understand. You warm it all the time. You warm it. People are tired. You are the only one who has home theater. Disturbing the peace of the compound. And you are supposed to be a Christian. You know, you are not the first. Have you read Ecclesiastes 3 1? To everything, there's a season, a time, to every purpose under heaven. If you go towards the end of it, it says, There is nothing new under the sun. Number two, why you must be humble is that God fights the proud. Once you are proud, God becomes your enemy. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. He said, God resisted when a man is proud and the man is praying and is fasting. God is angry with that man. God resists the proud. When a man is humble, God gives him grace. God resist, resist, resist. I asked married women, why can't if your husband call you, why can't you say sir? Your husband call you. Uh, what name now? Mama Paul. You say nah. What is nah? No. What is nah? So say eh. Uh -huh. So say yes. What happened to yes, darling, or yes, sir? He's talking. Okay, sir. No. That's your mouth. You. 